Definition of sine, the y-coordinate of a point on the unit circle. Definition of cosine, the x-coordinate of a point on the unit circle. Let me explain why that is the way that it is. If we were to take a point on this unit circle and draw a radius to that point, we would have x and y for the coordinates of that point. x meaning we went to the right, x units, and then we went up y units, x and y. In a unit circle, by definition, the radius is 1. Definition of a unit circle is the radius is 1. So if we take this reference angle, which I'll call theta, we could say sine of theta, if you remember Sokotoa, sine is the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. The opposite leg is y, the hypotenuse is 1, which reduces to y. So essentially we're saying sine of theta is equal to y, which is the definition of sine, the y-coordinate of a point on the unit circle. Definition of cosine cosine of theta is the adjacent leg, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 1, which reduces to x. So we're saying cosine of theta is equal to x, which is the definition of cosine. So that's why those definitions are what they are. If we look at the alternate definition, of sine and cosine. If the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position intersects the unit circle at p, x, y, then cosine of theta is x and sine of theta is y, which is what we just said here. It's also what it says up here. Circular function, a function defined using a unit circle. Well, we just defined sine and cosine using the unit circle. Therefore, sine and cosine are circular functions. Scroll down here a bit. Sine and cosine functions of an angle in standard position. Here's another definition of sine and cosine, and this does not have to be a unit circle. For any angle in standard position measuring theta, a point P, X, Y on its terminal side, let me draw that. So we got some point P here, the coordinates are x, y, and we have an angle in standard position like so, this being theta. And r being the square root of x squared plus y squared, that sum, the sine and cosine functions are as follows. So let me explain why r is equal to this. If I put a 90 degree angle here and say this is x and this is y and this is r, the Pythagorean theorem will tell us that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. If you square each leg in a right triangle and add those, that will equal the hypotenuse squared. If you then square root both sides of that, when you square root, you square root the entire side, not each term. You're going to get r equals plus or minus. But we're not going to use plus or minus because it's a distance. Distances are positive. That's where this comes from. This r equals the square root of the sum of x squared and y squared. So, I think it will be logical to you to see that sine of theta is y over r. So we got theta. Sine is the opposite leg, which is always going to be y, using a reference angle. And the hypotenuse is r. Cosine of theta is the adjacent leg x over the hypotenuse. So cosine adjacent leg x over the hypotenuse of r. These angles that you're given is always a reference angle. Or at least I should say, you need to find the reference angle from the angle that you're given. The x's and y's are always in relation to the reference angle. If you forget what a reference angle is, please review that 
in your notes. If we continue down here, we can define all these trig functions from an angle and standard position. So we had sine and cosine already. Tangent of theta is y over x. That's because tangent is the opposite leg, opposite meaning the one that doesn't touch it, over the adjacent leg. That's the leg that does touch the angle. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine. So you reciprocate y and r and you get r over y. Secant is reciprocal of cosine. So you reciprocate. Cotangent, reciprocal of tangent, reciprocal of y over x is x over y. Then we have these facts down here that need to be memorized. And basically these last three are just restating that these are reciprocals. Cosecant reciprocal is sine. Secant reciprocal is cosine. Cotangent reciprocal is tangent. This one here is a little more complex. This is one that's different than the other ones. It needs to be memorized. Tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta. Those are facts. Memorize them. Example A. Find the values of the six trig functions of an angle in standard position if the point with the given coordinates lies on the terminal side. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to draw a little coordinate plane. 4, 12 is in quadrant 1. Which would be around here. If we go to the right 4 and up 12. That means x is 4 and y is 12. Theta is an angle in standard position. If we use the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, we can figure out what r is. x is 4, y is 12, r, we don't know what r is. Four squared is 16, 12 squared is 144, 16 and 144 is 160. If you square root both sides, it's plus or minus the square root of 160. The radius is always positive. Also, this radical reduces to 4 times the square root of 10. <clears throat> so, our hypotenuse is 4 square roots of 10. That's the hardest part. Now, we have to answer these questions. Sine of theta. Sine is y over r. So that is 12 over 4 square roots of 10. Cosine of theta is x over r. That's 4 over 4 square roots of 10. Tangent is y over x, which is 12 over 3. <clears throat> Cosecant is reciprocal of sine. So that's 4 square roots of 10 divided by 12. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's 4 square roots of 10 over 4. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So that's 3 over 12. If your fraction can be reduced, you shall reduce it. Also, if you need to rationalize your denominator, you should. That means make it so your denominator is a rational number, which means no radicals. So, for example, we can divide both 4 and 12 by 4 and get 3 over the square root of 10. Then to rationalize our denominator, we can multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 10. 3 times the square root of 10 is 3 square roots of 10. Square root of 10 times square root of 10 is 10. So this is our simplified answer of what sine of theta is. For cosine of theta, you can divide 4 and 4 by 4, so you get 1 over the square root of 10. If you rationalize it, multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 10, you get square root of 10 over 10. Tangent of theta, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Cosecant of theta, 
You can divide both 4 and 12 by 4 and get square root of 10 over 3. We don't have to rationalize it because the denominator doesn't have any radicals. Secant, you can divide 4 by 4 and get square root of 10. And cotangent, 3 over 12 reduces to 1 fourth. That's how you do these problems. You have to know your ratios. You got to plug things in. You got to simplify your fractions. Oh, and I think I made a mistake. Pickles. Tangent is y over x. x was 4 here, not 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Sorry about that. Same thing over here. This wasn't a 3, it was a 4. And then 4 over 12 is 1 third. Sorry about that. So fours, not threes. Number two, same directions. Find the values of the sig trig functions of an angle of standard position if a point with the given coordinates lies on the terminal side. Three fours in quadrant one. So we draw a right triangle, and that right triangle is always made with the x axis. X is three, y is four. I recognize this is a Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triple means that the sides of the triangle are integers, and the 3, 4, 5 is the smallest Pythagorean triple. I don't need to do the work for the Pythagorean theorem because I recognize it's a Pythagorean triple. Sine of theta is y over r, that's 4 fifths. Cosine of theta is x over r, that's 3 fifths. Tangent of theta is y over x, which is 4 thirds. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals, so we get 3 fourths. Fractions don't reduce, and they don't need rationalized. Number 3, we have the ordered pair 2, negative 3. It's going to be in quadrant 4. Went to the right 2, and we went down 3. We don't know what r is. To figure out what r is, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. A leg squared plus a leg squared equals a hypotenuse squared. x is 2 y is negative 3, shoot, don't know what r is, 2 times 2 is 4, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, -er. 4 plus 9 -er is 13, square root both sides, technically it's plus or minus, but the radius is always positive, 13 does not reduce the radical 13 does not reduce. So r is square root of 13. Then we answer these questions. Sine of theta is y over r. So it's negative 3 over the square root of 13. I don't know why I wrote 2. So y over r. Cosine is x over r. Tangent is y over x. Then we have reciprocals. Reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so that's square root of 13 over negative 3. Reciprocal of cosine is secant, square root of 13 over 2. Reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, so that's 2 over negative 3. You can put the negative on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. Now, some of these are not finished. 
They're not finished because the denominator has a radical in it. If we multiply the first fraction here, top and bottom by square root of 13, we're going to get negative square root of 13 times the 3 that's already there over the square root of 13. Cosine of theta, if you multiply the top and bottom by square root of 13, you get 2 square roots of 13 over 13. Tangent's already finished. None of the other fractions have radicals on the bottom. So those are our answers for number 3. Number 4, this is a quadrantal angle. Go to the left, 3. That's what x is. And y is 0. To do these problems, you have to know what x, y, and r are. Sorry for the stutter. x is negative 3, y is 0. What, pray tell, is r? Well, r is the radius. The radius of the circle is the distance from the center of the circle to the circle. I know there's no circle here, but we could draw one if we wanted. So if x is 3 units away from the center, that means that the radius is 3 units away from the center. So we know what x, y, and r are, <laughs> sorry, without doing the Pythagorean theorem because it's a quadrantal angle. Now we just need to answer the questions. Sine of theta is y over r. 0 divided by 3 is 0. Cosine of theta is x over r. Negative 3 over 3 is negative 1. Tangent of theta is y over x. That's a 0 over a negative 3, which reduces to 0. Then we got reciprocals. Reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Because 0 over 1 reciprocated is 1 divided by 0. Reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. Reciprocal of 0 is undefined once again. Example B appears to be different types of problems than example A, but it's really the same fundamental concept. Suppose theta is an angle in standard position whose terminal side lies in the given quadrant. So like for number 1, quadrant is quadrant 4. Standard position is an angle whose initial side is on the positive x-axis and whose terminal side rotates someplace. And the vertex of the angle is here at the origin. So if I'm in quadrant 4, that means that my theta is here, like so. Directions say... Continue. For each function, find the values of the remaining five trig functions of theta. And we're told this, that sine of theta is negative four-fifths. Anytime you do these problems, you always end up with a right triangle, unless it's quadrantal. And one of the legs needs to be the x-axis, like so. The angle theta that we're trying to figure out well, we're not trying to figure out that we're using. When we use this triangle, we're using this reference angle in here, which I'll call alpha for the time being. Sine of theta, we're told, is negative 4 fifths. And my 4 fifths is a bit ugly. Sine of an angle is the opposite leg, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is r. So for this problem, negative 4 is y, and r is 5. It doesn't tell you that y is negative 4 and r is 5, but at the same time, it does tell you, because it says sine of theta is negative 4 fifths. Now that negative could have went with the top, or it could have went with the bottom reason that we know it can't go with the bottom, it can't be 4 over negative 5, because that would mean that r is negative. r is always positive. It's the radius. The radius is always a positive number. 
in quadrant four, the y value is negative. So it makes sense here that our y value is going to be negative four. So we get negative four for y. We have r is five. We don't know what x is. We use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what it is. Fortunately for us, this is a Pythagorean triple once again, which makes x three. It's a three, four, five triangle. We know it's positive three because we went to the right. In quadrant four, the x value is always positive. Now we try to answer these questions. What is sine of theta? Well, sine is y over r. That's negative four over five. We were told that in the directions. Cosine is x over r. That's three over five. Tangent is y over x, that's negative 4 over 3. Then we have the reciprocals, which is 5 over negative 4. You can put the negative on top or bottom, it doesn't matter. Reciprocal of cosine is secant. Reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Finished. Number 2, same direction, says tangent of theta is the square root of 2 when it's in quadrant 3. Trig functions need to be fractions. So tangent of theta is the square root of 2. could be written as the square root of 2 over 1. Tangent is y over x. This is telling us that y is square root of 2 and x is 1. So we draw this in quadrant 3. We have theta, like so, y is the square root of 2, x is 1. Now why is that wrong? x can't be 1 in quadrant 3, it has to be negative 1. y can't be square root of 2, it has to be negative. These are actual, these are actually, I should say, negatives. How can they be negatives when the original problem was positive? Because a negative divided by a negative reduces to a positive square root of 2. So you have to pay attention to what quadrant you're in to determine the signs of things. We don't know what r is. So we use the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. We substitute in 4x with a negative 1 in for y with the negative square root of 2. Don't know what r is. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative square root of 2 squared is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Square root both sides, you get plus or minus the square root of 3 is r. r is the radius, it is always positive. Once you know what x, y, and r are, then you answer the questions. Sine of theta is y, negative square root of 2, over r, square root of 3. That's going to need um, cleaned up a little bit. We'll just write it down for now. Cosine is x, negative 1, over r, square root of 3. That also is going to need cleaned up. Can't have radicals on the bottom. Tangent, we were told, is the square root of 2. Reciprocals, reciprocal of square root of 2 is 1 over the square root of 2. Reciprocal of negative 1 over square root of 3 is square root of 3 over negative 1, which reduces to negative square roots of 3. And reciprocal of sine is cosecant, which is square root of 3 over negative square root of 2. A lot of these need fixed. Cosine here square root of the 3 can't be on the bottom. So if we multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3, we're going to get negative square root of 6 over 3. If the square root of 6 would reduce, we would reduce it. It doesn't. When you multiply two radicals, you multiply the inside numbers together. The next one, if you multiply top and bottom by square root of 3, you get negative square roots of 3 over 3. Tangent of square root of 2 is fine how it is. Cosecant, you multiply the top and bottom by square root of 2, you get square root of 6 over negative 2. The negative could be on top or bottom, doesn't matter. 
Secant is fine. Cotangent will be square root of 2 over 2. So final answer, final answer, final answer, final answer, final answer, final answer. Example C. Tell whether the value of each trig function is positive, negative, zero, or undefined. So essentially, this is similar to A and B examples, but it's less work because we don't have to find out the actual answer. We just got to figure out what the sign is, S-I-G-N, not the sign S-I-N-E. Sine of 2 pi, well, that's in radians. 2 pi is a complete revolution, which puts our point on the positive x-axis. On the positive x-axis, we have to know the sine of x, y, and r to finish this. x has to be positive because you go to the right. y has to be 0 because you're not going up or down. r is always positive. Sine is y over r. y is 0. r is some positive number. 0 divided by a positive number is 0. The answer to this problem is 0. Next we have tangent of 315. 315 is in quadrant 4. So we've got this point here. We don't have to know much. We just have to know x, y, and r, positive, negative, or zero. Going to the right makes our x value positive. Going down makes our y value negative. r is always positive. Therefore, tangent of 315 degrees, which is y over x, y is a negative, x is a positive, if you divide a positive and a negative, you get a negative. So this answer is going to be a negative answer. Number three, we got 11 pi over 4. Let's figure out where that falls in the coordinate plane, knowing that sine is always y over r. If we start at the beginning in pi's and radians, we got 0 pi over 4. A complete revolution is 2 pi, which is 8 pi over 4. So if we count, halfway around between 0 and 8 is 4 pi over 4. Halfway between 0 and 4 is going to be 2. This is 2 pi over 4. These fractions do reduce, but we don't want them to. We want to keep our denominators all the same so it's easy to compare. Halfway between 4 and 8 is 6. Still haven't gone far enough. We're supposed to get to 11. So if you look at our numerators, they're increasing by 2 each time. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. If we continue here, we're going to have 10 pi over 4. Then we're going to have 12 pi over 4. So 11 is a complete revolution and then ends up in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, your x value is negative, your y value is positive, and your r value is always positive. Therefore, this is a positive divided by a positive, which is a positive. The answer to this question is going to be a positive answer. Number 4, we got cosine of 450 degrees. Anytime you have an angle that's bigger than 360, like the last problem was bigger than 2 pi, you can always find a coterminal angle. I'm going to do that for this one just to remind you how to do that. To find coterminal angles, you add or subtract complete revolutions. 360 is a complete revolution. We end up with 90 degrees. Cosine is x over r. 90 degrees is on the positive y-axis. Can't make a triangle there because the triangle is with the x-axis. x here is going to be 0. y here is going to be a positive number because we went up. And r is always positive. So cosine, which is x over r, is 
going to be 0 over a positive, which is 0. This answer is 0. Notes are finished. Have a wonderful day.